Saravar. My friends, here is Jumdar's Solvers, bringing yet another chapter of this long, tortuous and endless battle of the German Faustjujus and their Italian Arditis allies against British troops of the Durham Light Infantry and units of the 4th Royal Tank Regiment. In the last episode, little progress was made in terms of dominated area, however, at that moment the 3rd Armoured Unit was destroyed, which prevented further progress towards the primary objectives. It is important to remember that there is still a strategically placed tank that prevents the advance towards the Bridge of Primasol, whose destruction is vital to achieving the objective of slowing the advance of the Allied troops towards Messina. Now, at this very moment, our troops are progressively advancing towards Objective Farm 1, whose occupants still show heroic resilience, even under intense attack from the MG-42 machine guns, MP-40 and Beretta M30 submachine guns, in addition to the German KAR-98 and Carcano-89 rifles. On the left flank, our troops are gradually approaching Farm 2, a vital objective in that sector. With only about 15 minutes left for the end of activities in the area, the immense power of our mortars on and off the map will be used, which until then had been used sparingly, and intensified the attack of the machine guns posted along the main road, in order to try to eliminate the resistances at the south end of the map. If these maneuvers are successful, we will be able to advance with our convoy towards the Primasol Bridge. Well, enough talk and let's fight. Shortly after neutralizing the enemy armor, a small reorganization of our forces is carried out quickly with the objective of withdrawing the units close to this sector of the front, which were under the focus of enemy artillery. At the same time, units carrying light machine guns are brought closer to the buildings around Farm 1 in order to intensify the suppression of these areas. The ever-increasing encirclement towards the objective of Farm 1, we note the shift of British forces towards its rear. This is a singular fact, as the enemy troops have been extremely resilient in the face of our numerical superiority, with few soldiers surrendering so far. The question is whether these units are fleeing in panic, or are heading for new defensive positions in their rear. We'll probably find out soon. The Farm 2 objective is subjected to intense artillery and machine gun fire, which turns most of the buildings into smoking wreckage. The carcass of abandoned vehicles lie there as an indelible testimony to the power and superiority of our fire.
despite overcoming several challenges and apparently finding themselves in a situation, if it is possible to talk like that, a little more comfortable, it is not possible to relax, because the enemy artillery is relentless and lashes our forces constantly and intensely, causing casualties all the time. Despite all the effort and progress made so far, our eyes turn to the southern end of the battle, where we notice the presence of a considerable contingent of British troops, in addition to the Sherman tank stationed there. Even more worrisome is there seems to be a continual movement of enemy troops from the front towards that sector of the battle. It appears the enemy has already identified the area as important and vital to us. To deal with the last enemy armor, units specialized in anti-tank action, which have participated in the destruction of the tank in the central region, are ordered to move quickly towards the left flank of the advance to increase the chances of neutralizing the Sherman that so much disturbance has caused. German and Italian forces are already preparing for the final attack on the Farm 1 buildings, just waiting for a further reduction in the strong resistance located in that region.
Matt Sherman is a real stone in our shoes, to say the least, and he's going to be a tough nut to crack. The fight takes on an epic dimension, with a desperate defense by the British forces and an almost suicidal advance by our troops. Time is rapidly slipping away, and the difference between success and failure is separated by the thin razor margin. anti-tank units are moving as quickly as possible, and we do not doubt for a moment their strength and courage, but at the same time, they are already showing clear signs of exhaustion. This issue needs to be resolved quickly. For desperate moments, desperate measures are needed. After having identified Sherman at the southern end of the battle as priority number one, we sent one of the trucks loaded with explosives to collect our anti-tank units, which are already tired from the various missions they have already carried out and the long displacement they are having to make to reach the sector where Sherman is located to try to disable it in time.
we come to the end of another episode of this never-ending saga. For every problem solved, a new one appears to haunt us. At this moment two facts are worrisome, the first is the indefectible Sherman tank standing unabated in front of our route. The second is the clear movement of British troops towards the rear, certainly to occupy defensive positions prepared in advance. Some measures have already been taken, such as transporting the anti-tank units to the front by one of our trucks loaded with explosives and preparing a tremendous artillery fire, followed by a smokescreen that we will launch using all the reserves we have available towards the south exit of the battle map. With these concerns in mind, Jim Dawes Selva says goodbye. Namaste.